After d4, d5, c4, knight c6, we play in the Chigorin, and in this video we're going to try to cover all the things we haven't seen. Let's start from this line. So knight f3, bishop g4 as we know, and then after e3 we play e5. We're going to go through, so bishop e2 we did go through already, but after e4 we went through knight e5, and everything that happens next. Or also knight to d2. So as we know, after knight goes back or e5, he will take... Queen takes back and then knight b4 with the idea of knight d3, it's a devastating opening. But in this video we're going to go through this move, which is the best. Knight to g1. Now here, you do take the bishop, but now the white player retained the possibility to take back with the knight. And now the whole strategy of knight b4 with an attack on d3 and c2 at the same time doesn't happen. Because after knight b4, our opponent can just castle and he's out of trouble. You're not going to be able to, re, uh, to remove the... Capacity of the white player to castle. You're not going to take that right away. So now, what's the move? F5. To consolidate the pawn chain, because we know that white wants to take this pawn, and we don't want to take in c4. So after pawn takes and queen to d5, knight b to c3, obviously here there's no reason to attack the, uh, the knight with the bishop, because the knight is protecting, and so you're not going to be able to remove the strong c3 knight from the opponent. So you just got to go back to d7. Castle, knight f6. Bishop d2 developing, there's no, no one else to put the bishop. Remember that the advantage that we have is not much, of course. This is white. This is the absolute best uh, uh, moves that our opponent can possibly play, which is why I've kept this for the end. We're approaching the end of the Chigorin saga. Um, but remember that you, the advantage that you have is that you have a good bishop. White has a really bad bishop, bishop d2. Uh, so castle long, rook to c1, putting the rook in open file on the file of the king. These moves are certainly going to happen. And you're going to play h5. And obviously here we castle the opposite side because we're going to be throwing all these pawns. Uh, h5, h4, and so on. So, uh, knight to f4 now by white. What else? I even if our opponent played like the h pawn or the g pawn, whatever. You All you need to do is just g5, h4, a g4, and so on. Bishop d6, completing development. Knight f to d5, best move by white. Now here we have to take, uh, take, take. Looks weird because our, we gave up a developed piece, but that allows us to enjoy the F open file as soon as we get to push the pawn. Besides, we didn't want our opponent to take our knight, then we'll take back, and uh, we kind of need the three, uh, the, all the, the pawn chain. So, so black to move h4, h3 for instance stops that, but you just play g5. So this is inevitable. You're gonna play g4, gonna open the files, and you're gonna enjoy this amazing attack. On the king, the situation is compromised. There's nothing that the white can do. The, what the black player is going to win this game. F3, you might argue to stop G4 from happening is the best move, but then you can take Queen takes back. He really doesn't look like our opponent has any problem because now there's double attack on this pawn. Pieces are all developed, except this obviously very uh, weak uh, backward pawn in E3. Except for that, it looks like this game is completely normal. However, Rook H to F8. You know, they're not to lose the pawn. And we are soon going to be able to play g4 and open everything. So e4 by white, for instance, doesn't work. Uh, here, you know th what the plan is. Now there's a, there's a an attack on g5, but you can take the pawn with the double attack on the queen. Queen can't just take the two rooks, because remember, there's also a bishop defending that square, f8. Uh, queen takes back, now you play rook f to e8. Don't trade, just to keep the advantage. R uh, queen to f5, pinning our queen. Fair enough, we just swap, swap, because then... Knight to d4, completely winning. Up in Matera, we've got nothing to fear. This bishop move here isn't a problem because you're winning a completely free rook. You're also threatening knight e2. Right, so another line we need to see is one that I've encountered myself in a FIDE tournament a couple of months ago and I needed to make a video about it. I forgot about it, so let's just take advantage to do it now. e3, e5, and now... White doesn't play bishop e2 or uh, h3 or anything we've seen before. And uh, also, obviously, we've never seen the move like knight b2 d2, but this is stupid because you got double attack on d4. So let's not go through this. And what about queen to b3? We haven't seen this at all. Now here, I didn't know this uh, setup at all, uh, but I just I played it correctly. Because here you take the knight. It's important to take the knight because the knight in f3, remember to understand the principles when you play the Chigonin, the knight in f3 is the defender of the square d4. And by placing the knight in c6 straight away, the sacrifice you make is that you are blocking the c pawn, right? 
but the advantage that you have is quick development and an attack on d4 so the knight in f3 has to go also we hate knights if you follow this channel and if you like me you hate knights just like me so take the knights anyway here the bishop has to be taken back because queen b7 is not a thing now if queen goes to b7 you will play knight b4 and now the knight's protected by the bishop this queen isn't winning anything and white can't just go for our bishop uh, to recapture a piece because knight c2 wins the rook so in this position white has to take the bishop okay now you take this pawn comes with an attack on the queen so there's an attack on the queen and now white has to do something about it obviously there's also a triple attack on the pawn in d4 so the best move by white is to take back with the bishop the reason is that this comes with a threat on, on f7 so the best by by black now is queen to d7 and now every move that, that white plays is met with the, the, the thematic knight a5 you're going to win the bishop pair from your opponent yes you also gave up the bishop pair but at least you've ruined any side for the opponent to castle white cannot castle king side or queen side uh, and get safe really anywhere so here what about d5 then this is in order to you know stop our triple attack on the square d4 it would be amazing to go there with the knight and there's nowhere uh, for the white pieces to protect the pawn in d5 uh, in, in d4 there's no maneuver knight c3 knight uh, d2 bishop none of them can help the pawn so after d5 the idea of playing e4 and conquer more space in the center knight plays knight a5 and now both moves that our opponent can make just just don't work so let's see for example one of them okay well white has to move the queen or play this move which is bishop to b5 this is attacking our queen so obviously if we take the queen and he takes us take back and then white has a rook and open file and this is actually good for white c6 attack the bishop and now the bishop can't just move away because then we will win the queen so white has to go on to go all in with the attack takes uh, pawn takes back and now the bishop cannot move because again we are attacking the queen so queen a4 is the only move because it comes with a counter attack on the knight so we take the bishop white takes the knight we're equal however knight e7 now the idea of knight c6 and now the development and the position is better for black uh development let's say bishop to d2 rook to b8 the queen's protecting this pawn this rook's protecting this pawn we don't have to worry about knight c3 or, or other attacks also because you see we have a plan of playing knight c6 but then queen can take in b5 so rook has to go to b8 knight c3 knight to c6 now is completely over because the queen will have to move there's nowhere to go except a6 but then knight b4 comes with an attack on the queen and the c2 and yeah so in this position after knight a5 attacking the two of them what if the queen just moved okay well take the bishop queen takes back and now f5 okay development knight c3 knight f6 bishop d2 remember nowhere safe for white to castle uh, although it looks like this castle might be good but let's, let me show you why no so uh bishop to d6 comes now long castle remember that if white had chosen short castle you can just castle opposite side and then just start throwing the pawns so it with the long castle you play a6 idea of playing b5 you know but it depends you, you can castle short now uh e4 by white counter attacking in the center just castle now obviously taking doesn't make sense because when you're done i mean he's gonna have triple pawn right so after rook h to g1 putting the rook in the same file of our king rook to f7 and now this rook here doubling up doesn't make any sense because the pawn in g7 is extremely well protected so let's look at this plan knight e2 with the idea of knight g3 and putting more attack over f5 the knight in f5 will be sitting very well but it's just too late you'll play rook to c8 and you're planning to play c6 so let's see for example knight to g3 now you will just take this pawn and now knight f5 is not accessible because of the queen so pawn takes back preparing knight f5 is too late you play c6 and now you're threatening pawn takes pawn rook pinning the queen completely game over if you ask the engine now the best continuation for white is king to b1 these are all computer moves now but it's too late pawn takes and after queen to b3 you play bishop to c5 putting pressure on this pawn and this cannot be defended with rook g2 because queen h3 completely finishes the white player but uh, what other move is there to play maybe rook h uh, rook g to f1 but you also have double attack on this pawn and then attack uh, on the pawn in f2 but it depends because when you move this pawn this queen will be pinning it so let's make an example uh if rook to uh, uh f1 to protect the pawn then you can take this knight and after knight takes and pawn takes back 
this rook is now pinned so white can play f3 it doesn't have to worry about the f2 pawn anymore but now you will play queen d3 forcing a drop of queens you're completely winning so that doesn't work and even if white doesn't play the f pawn but rather moves the king away in order to avoid that move you will play queen to b5 and really force a trade and this cannot be stopped let's say queen to d5 still pinning the rook but then he will just take this pawn and uh, obviously we're threatening queen swap and uh, you're completely winning now so in this position as we mentioned knight g3 then you can take take and then play c6 what if white plays king b1 right now that means the c6 is not is not really something it's not really a problem because white can just take now here you take the pawn pawn takes back and now c6 pawn takes rook takes and this is white having played only top engine moves but still in a faulty variation this comes with an attack on the queen the knight's attacking this pawn so after queen to d3 defending the pawn here but you will play bishop to c5 same scenario if white plays bishop e3 uh, you just swap take take and now you take this pawn right and a, and a couple of moves ago instead of bishop e3 now what what if our opponent takes our queen first rook takes back now bishop e3 you know still doesn't work can't play f3 to protect the pawn and you are going to take that pawn so if white protect you can't play f3 because then you lose the rook knight to c3 protects this pawn yes but bishop f2 is now accessible position evaluated minus three or something let's change topic and now we're going to go through this other line the one with white playing e3 straight away as we know we play e5 and after the pawn takes we proceed with d4 so we give up another pawn now we have to see some stuff here let's start with this one when white takes the pawn so we're down two pawns but then we take back and crazy enough we are swapping even though we're down in material however queen takes and knight takes comes with a threat of uh, the, uh, the, the the c2 fork white can play bishop to d3 but we have seen stuff like this in the past let's look at this takes back knight takes and now bishop to d3 stops knight c2 from happening but you play bishop to e6 and now you're threatening to just win this pawn back and black is better white bishop can't take back because knight c2 uh, is much better compensation let's look at this move which we have never seen before which is bishop to e3 if you remember from video number five of this saga b3 here was the move that we've seen instead of bishop e3 uh, b3 was the move to protect that and you will play a uh, long castle and you carry on with the game make sure you check out all the other videos before you watch this one so bishop to e3 now how to respond to this it's attacking the knight so long castle and now here if knight to c3 the best move is knight to c6 back so it looks like we've lost the advantage however we have an attack on this bishop so obviously a move like long castle seems to be defending everything but then you will take here and uh, after all the swaps you see that it's going to be double attack on this bishop so the bishop moves you swap everything and then you also take in this pawn and you get all of a sudden an advantage uh, instead of long castle what about bishop to c2 now save the bishop uh, also let's i mean let's not look at king e2 because you still have that attack on e5 anyway and then this and this so let's look at bishop to c2 getting out of trouble at least now you recapture this pawn and now you see that white is much better knight g2 e2 this will allow the white player to castle but you will just take this pawn well let's look at these two setups if white does play this move knight e2 to be able to castle you will take this pawn and now if white castles let's say castle you play knight f6 you carry on the game like this obviously a move like bishop takes a7 doesn't work because b6 wins the bishop from our opponent and uh, you are up a pawn and now the game is completely open so there's a lot of things that can happen i'm not going to be able to continue this line however black is a is in a much more comfortable end game you're gonna have to take it from here uh in this position here just a couple of moves ago instead of what about bishop a7 right now let's make an example of how to trap that bishop especially because in this situation white can play bishop a uh, bishop e4 uh, uh stops the king from moving knight f6 though attacks the bishop and there's no coming back because when the bishop moves you you trade it and then this bishop in a7 will be taken so counter attack like b3 for instance you will take here pawn takes take take but now bishop e4 
So you are winning material. Rook c1 doesn't work because of knight d3. So in this position, uh, so in this position, instead of knight e2, what about knight f3? Which defends the pawn. So white is not going to lose the pawn. However, the problem is white cannot castle. But let's see how to deal with this. Now you play knight g2 e7. And after rook to d1, the white player says, you know what, if we trade rooks, then I won't have to worry about king safety anymore because you won't have much stuff. Now here you play knight d5. And so after knight takes and bishop takes, it looks like our opponent is indeed free to castle now. But now it's not recommendable to take this knight, give up the bishop pair just to win this pawn. Best thing to do is bishop to e7. And now if white plays bishop to f4 to put more defense over that pawn, for example, best move is to just take the pawn in a2, that's a free pawn with no compensation. If white plays, let's say, this move, uh, b3, for example, right, now yes... You have enough development to afford yourself to take this knight, give up the bishop pair, pawn takes back, and now you can jump to e5. And uh, you've got a serious uh, structural advantage, although white has the bishop pair, so you're going to have to take it from here. This is, remember, this is like one of the last videos, maybe the last video about the Chigorin, so it's the absolute most boring and, and most solid possible lines from the opponent. So the advantage is often not that huge. So let's restart now and let's look at something else a little bit more sharp. So e3, the early e3 variation, right? You play e5 and when they take, you play d4. In this video, we're gonna, uh, now we're gonna go through this move, knight f3, which is a very popular move. And uh, I used to struggle a lot with this move in a way that I kind of didn't know what to do because white didn't accept the gambit, but that's actually worse. This move is bad because... Now here I used to have a tendency of playing bishop g4 to pin the knight, but the best move is bishop to b4 check. Uh, the thing is that knight f3 is such a bad move, positionally speaking, that I couldn't believe my opponent could be so bad to play it. And so I, will, I was looking for something more than that, but in reality, you need to remember that if the pawn in d4 doesn't get taken, it holds control of the square c3, so you can just play bishop check. The knight can't go to c3, the natural square. If knight goes to d2, then you can take the pawn in here and the position is falling apart for our opponent. This doesn't look any good. If white blocks with the bishop, here again, you take in e3. And uh, bishop takes here, doesn't work because you can take the pawn with check. The king can't take back because you're attacking the queen, then you can win the queen. So pawn takes, king has to take. It's really ugly. So it goes pretty much like this, you see, take, King has to go to e2, now you can take the queen, and then you recapture the the bishop. There's no reason for white to play like this. So let's not look at this. Let's look at, uh, after taking this pawn, what if the, uh, the pawn takes back? Okay, take, queen takes back, bishop to g4, so that the queen is defended by the rook. Knight to c3, developing, doesn't work, but it's not like, you know, queen takes and rook takes, it's actually a fairly powerful rook. But there's nothing else. Let's say knight c3. Okay, take, take. Obviously not with the knight, because then you can take in e5. So take with the king. And now castle long. Rook, uh, king e1. Rook to e8. Finalizes the attack on that pawn. h3 attacking the bishop. Bishop to d7 is the best move. To d1. Looking for a swap. Okay, finally take this pawn. Bishop e2 de developing. Now you can take. And uh, you, you're winning this pawn afterwards, so it's completely winning position. And uh, see, if we go back a couple of moves, I mean, a few moves, actually. Here, in this position, as I mentioned, knight c3 looks bad, because then you can take the queen. Uh, you might argue, okay, what about queen takes and gives us the open file? However, this is a perfectly reasonable move. It's, it's perfectly uh, a continuable game. However, white has these uh, two isolated pawns. That's our strength in this game, and these pawns are not going to last. Here, we're also threatening to take this pawn... So here we're going to play the usual, the usual moves, knight e7. You can play knight to uh, g6 and finalize the attack on this pawn. And these pawns are never going to be able to be defended in any way. Let's see, if white now develops, play bishop to e2. Okay, knight e7. h3 attacking the bishop. Take, take. And now we recapture the, the pawn. Side, we also got an attack on this pawn here and then the one in e3 and then the square c2. So it's not recommendable for white to go and take this pawn. It's getting greedy and it hasn't even finished the development. What about b3? Obviously this doesn't work because you will play knight f5. Finalizing the attack on the pawn in e, uh, on e, e3. This cannot be pushed to defend itself. 
Although you might argue that it can happen, but then you play knight d3 check. And this game gets uh, very, very fun from now on. It's completely over, as you can tell. Oh, and by the way, just la one last quick mention. Here, if after the e3 and e5, white plays knight f3, you just play bishop g4, and this is a perfect transposition from the early knight f3 game with bishop g4, right? You've seen this a lot, so you can take it from here. All right, let's make mention of a different game now. Knight c6, I play in Chigorin, and white plays g3 straight away. Right, so g3 is the third move. It's some sort of a, an attempt of uh, going into some Catalan. And, uh, you know, I always call it Catalan when they play like this, although I don't think it's very accurate, but I don't care. So, the, you know, it might happen. It does happen, actually, and you got to know what to do. Now, here, you have to take this pawn. Now, the, let's just explore very quickly a few options, because this move is one of the less popular, but it is still popular enough. Let's explore a few options and see how to take it. Now, knight f3 by white, you just play e5. It's a typical Chigorin move. Happy to walk to welcome all the swaps. Now, a move like d5 here, by the way, doesn't help because you're going to play e4, right? And when they take, you swap queens, and then you take the knight. They might take you, but then you can take the... You you know, you, you're you going to be up in material. Although, the, 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 the structure looks horrible. So, let's make an example. If they take, you take back, and you're winning. You're just much better position. This pawn cannot take in f3 because bishop takes f3 check, wins the rook... And so that's horrible. And obviously white will have to take the pawn back and say, you know, hope that you will take this pawn. That will be a triple pawn. It looks absolutely horrible. But you're not going to do it. You're going to play knight e7 to attack this pawn and take like that. Pawn takes means bishop b7. That means that white can't take the bishop in c4 because then we have a threat in f3. Knight is threatening to take the pawn, so the bishop might as well take in c4. And now you recapture in c6. So we've got a clear majority, a 3 against 2 on this side, and here we have a minority. However, these, four, uh, these two pawns are doubled, so it might be a little bit le uh, more complicated for white to go and promote them. Besides, we haven't lost our right to castle, neither we are going to. But apart from that, this is a completely open game. There's too many things that can happen now. You're going to have to take it from here. Black is slightly better. But let's go back. And, uh, uh, in the, and in the G3 game... Right, so the pseudo Catalan, or one of the many, God, I hate when they play g3 and a bishop in fianchetto. Anyway, you take in, in, in c4, knight f3, e5. So, what if white just plays e3 to support the pawn? Okay, well, bishop check. How do you think this can be blocked? If white blocks with the bishop, then you can just take. Queen takes, because, you know, then we will have... Uh, a lot of attack over the pawn in d4, and the queen needs to keep an eye on that. However, you still take, take, and now take, take. We're going to isolate the pawn. If white take with the queen, take, uh, take, take, and then white will have an isolated pawn. We got four against two. If, uh, you know, obviously there's a pawn in d4, so this pawn isn't really that strong yet. Anyway, bishop e6 comes now to support that pawn further. Bishop to g2. C6 solidifies the pawn. We don't have to worry about anything. Castle, knight e7. Knight c3, castle. And again, completely open game now. There's no much that we can see except the fact that the pawn, we've got a clear majority on the queen side. Obviously, the odds are in our favor. Again, we're just like uh, briefly exploring this uh, uh, this Catalan idea inside the Chigorin. So we can move on to the, uh, to the more popular moves so here after this check a few moves ago bishop before check we went through bishop d, uh, d2 what about knight c3 okay bishop to g4 pin in the knight and i've always seen this pin as a bit useless because white can just do this but remember that then you can do this and uh, so why why useless because well bishop g2 isn't the problem of course h3 is more of a problem white has to play h3 now and I, I've always considered this useless because then you have to give up the bishop for the queen. I mean, for the for the knight, and then the the, the queen is taking back, developing, and uh, then the queen is attacking b7. I don't know. I've never enjoyed this. So, but this is the best move. After this, you will ignore the attack on the bishop and just take here, because you're threatening to take this knight with threats of discover checks. So white is not recommended to take this bishop. 
but rather to take back. But either way, now, when they take back, now we can take, because now this pawn is hanging. So bishop takes, queen takes, knight takes, and now queen e4 check doesn't work because queen e7 pins the queen, meaning that we're not going to lose material. Queen takes e7, knight takes back, king to d1 is the only way to stop knight c2, uh, but now long castle. And bishop to d2 to, to stop the very strong discover checks, but either way, knight f3 closes the game. So let's take it from the start. G2, and we take this pawn. So we went through knight f3. Let's look at this one. e3 first of all. Looks kind of solid. Okay, knight f6. Bishop g2. So white doesn't play the knight f3 move because it doesn't want to go through e5 and everything. Uh, but uh, still, e5 is coming. Look, if pawn takes, you know what to do. Just swap queens. If, if white develops, plays knight f3. Then obviously take, knight takes, take, take, you've isolated the pawn, and now c6 is the best move. Castle, bishop e6, and now a move like knight d2 to put more pressure on this pawn to maybe go to f3. It's just met with queen taking a clean pawn, so that's not going to happen. Uh, knight to c3 developing, bishop e7, rook e1, all of these moves seems to be making perfect sense. Castle, and now h3 by white. Uh, the idea is simple, because we want to play queen d7 and go for uh, removing the fianchetto bishop from the king, which is the best defender of the king. h3 now, and now king to h2. Looks like we're not going to go to that square. How to continue when white plays this annoying setup that looks is very solid. Rook f to e8. And after knight to e4, take. If rook takes, then bishop d5 gives white a winning game. You're going to remove this bishop and uh, then you're going to be pushing this majority against the minority. You don't have to worry about the weak c6 pawn because this bishop is gone. If instead white takes back with the bishop, then h6 is the best move. And after the bishop returns to g2, rook a to d8 finalizes the attack on the pawn. Bishop to e3 to protect it. Bishop to b4 attacking the rook. Rook to e2. Bishop to f5. Threatening to... Go on d3 and sit on the throne. a3, bishop a5. Rook to c1, putting the rook on the attack of this pawn. Bishop to d3. And we're never going to lose the control and the majority that we have. b3 is not possible right now. You're attacking the rook. By the way, the rook is trapped. But even then, we're completely winning. One more thing to explore is, uh, so in the Catalan idea, Take here. What if white just takes bishop to g2 straight away? Okay, well, take this pawn. So that's there's nothing there. e3, and it looks like we're going to have to move the knight and lose the right to castle when the queen swaps. That's fine, because knight c6. That means queen takes, knight takes back. You don't even lose the right to castle. And you don't have to worry about knight to d2 to take this pawn. You will not be able to play b5, because bishop takes rook. But you will be able to play bishop e6. So you're just keeping the advantage. So let's let's see white just going on. Queen a4, continuing in a more serious game. e5, crazy enough. Giving up material because after take, take, then... Well, this is not really a problem. Let me show you. Take, take, take. Bishop e7 and queen c4. We have uh, uh, basically equal pawns, but we got two isolated pawns. But great development. Rook to b8. White's got nothing developed. Well, let's see. For example, if knight f3, bishop to b5 simply does the job. And uh, the, 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 the queen will have to move queen e4. But then, why, why can't castle? So, bishop to d6 comes now. Defending the pawn. And uh, you, you're going to be able to play knight f6 in castle. Black is completely winning. The position of the opponent is horrible, as you can tell. This is not a free pawn, by the way, knight e5. Because you will play knight f6. There are no double checks here. So the attack on the queen remains queen to f4, the only way to keep defending uh, the knight that is under attack. Queen to e7 finalizes the attack on that knight, and you can't take it back. So here in this position, a few moves ago, instead of knight f3, what if a4 to stop bishop b5? Okay, well, knight f6. Knight c3, rook to b4. Attack. You see, see the importance of development. The rook's attacking the queen, the queen will have to move. Queen e2. Queen a8 comes now. Lack of development. Attacking the rook. 
what to do. Nothing works here. If you play queen f3, bishop c6 wins the game immediately. If you play f3, you will play e4. And you are going to take that pawn. And uh, it's completely winning. What if f4? Well, then bishop e7. But the position is completely lost for our opponent. Bishop e7, you have idea of bishop g4. The game will have to continue from here. But white is completely winning. What if instead of, uh, of any of that... Instead of queen f3, instead of uh, f3, what if knight to f3 now? Obviously, this is really stupid. You will play bishop h3, this is the best move, stops him from castling. Knight to b5, threatening to go to c7, this match with bishop to d6, you don't have to worry about anything at all. You're threatening bishop g2, winning the game. This cannot be met with, because like you see, bishop g2 makes a fork to the knight and the rook. So it cannot be met with rook g1, because then bishop g4 finalizes... Uh, the attack on this night, it's game over.